Hey everyone, welcome back for Nostalgic Monday on Carter Blaze. I am pumped about today's game. Today, we will be getting on the magic school bus. <laughs> and it does not get any more late 90s, early 2000s than the magic school bus. Um, this is a game that came out in 2001. It's a Scholastic Book Fair game again but it's so good anyways let's go ahead and hop into this game oh yes Oh man, this is gonna be so good. Oh snap. Please let this be a normal field trip with a friend. No way! Cruising on down Main Street. Dance break. Relaxing, feeling good. Oh yeah. Next thing that you know, you see it. Octopus in the neighborhood. Surfing on the sound wave. Welcome to the Volcano Observation Station. Click your name or type in a new one. Then click the go button when you're ready to erupt into action. That was amazing. I love the matter school bus. Are you sure you want to erase this name? Yes. That was when I was practicing earlier to make sure everything was working. <laughs> so we're going to put a new name in. Here we go. go. To get up close and view these volcanoes, uh, you'll need a lava license. Click the eyes, cheeks, ears, nose, and hair to change them. When you've got your look just right, click the go button and we'll go see the sight. What is, what are these eyes? Like lily pads. You're a vision of loveliness. Loveliness. Thank you. I try. I get up early in the morning. That. Now there's a fabulous face. Okay, Miss Frizzle. Yeah, a mustache. Hmm. Yes. Leaping lava. You're quite a looker. I should have glasses, since I'm always wearing glasses. That face would liven up any place. We have glass. Perfect. That's exactly what we needed. Oh, that's it. That's me, right? <laughs> All right. I love that it has a printer icon. You could write a whole book about that look. If you want to print your lava license out. Go. Let's, let's go. Welcome to the Volcano Observation Station, where exhilarating games and explosive experiments are yours to explore. And there's even more in store outside the door. Ooh. Okay. I think I want to turn closed captioning on, just in case anyone needs it. 
Oh, there we go. Let's do the plants. Welcome to the Green Machine, where you can have fun while helping to bring this volcanic wasteland back to life. Oh. Click and drag stickers onto the background to plant flowers, trees, or even put up a house or two. To start over, click the volcano button and watch the big explosion. Wait a minute. So you want me to put a house and then explode everything? Click to choose a house and then click the place on the picture where you want it to go. So this house is off to uh, the side. Uh, I can't do that. Click. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is where I want it. Yeah. There has to be a bathroom somewhere. I'm gonna be chaotic. And if you want to go to the bathroom, you have to hike up the volcano. Bicycling down there. And there's a bear and a bunny rabbit in the bathroom. volcano ever. Look at the wildlife that has come back. I do feel like we need more houses. some palm trees growing on the side. I like that. I think this is good. I don't think it's going to get any better than this. And just one more thing. Perfect. Alright. Here we go. Are you really ready to blast away this picture and start over? Yes! Hey, Scholastic Book Fair, we gotta talk. <laughs> we 
just destroyed all the animals and the new people that we just built the houses on. Oh my goodness. I don't know about that. <laughs> What's this? Woohoo! This is where you can dare to compare. Click a button on the left of the screen to choose one of these real life volcanoes. Then click one of the buttons on the right to explore rock and ash, lava flows, sound, and fantastic features. Then click the go button and see what happens. It's time to do some daring comparing. Hmm. Mount right. St. Helens. Mount St. Helens. The sound. It's amazing how Mount St. Helens made a huge blast in 1980, but no one nearby heard a thing. The sound was trapped inside the thick ash and then shot up and away to distant places where people heard a loud boom. That was really cool. Lava flow, rock and ash, rock and ash. When Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980, it blasted a cloud of ash twice as high as a jet plane flies. Lava flow. In 1980, the lava that came out of Mount St. Helens was too thick to flow down the mountain, so it formed a lava dome. Since then, my how this dome has grown. Fantastic features. The 1980 blast of Mount St. Helens was so powerful that it blew down enough trees to build 300,000 houses. Wow. El Mauna Loa. Ooh. Rock and ash. I love how educational the games, the scholastic early 2000s PC games were. And I'm still interested in them all these years later. Hawaiian volcanoes like Mauna Loa don't explode into huge clouds of ash, but they do shoot up lovely fountains of lava. Then droplets of volcanic glass, called Pele's Tears, are cooled by the wind and carried away. Pele! Oh my gosh, we learned about that in Nancy Drew, Creature of Kapu Cave. Lava Flow! In 1950, an eruption of Mauna Loa lasted only 23 days, but it made as much lava as another Hawaiian volcano called Kilauea can in four years. Some lava flows traveled 15 miles to the sea in less than three hours. When an eruption takes place at Mauna Loa, things happen quickly. Also, I am living for this animation. Sound. Compared to highly explosive volcanoes, a shield volcano like Mauna Loa is quiet as a mouse. <laughs> Fantastic features. If the height of Mauna Loa were measured from its base on the ocean floor, this Hawaiian volcano would be the tallest mountain on Earth, higher than Mount Everest. I am mind blown. Krakatoa. Rock and ash. In 1883, an Indonesian volcano, Krakatoa, erupted with such force that the wind spread volcanic ash all over the world. Hundreds of miles away, day turned into night and people had to turn on the lights. That's terrifying. Oh. Lava flow. When Krakatoa erupted in 1883, there was no lava flow. Instead, there was one bombastic blast. That's what happens when pressure builds up under a lava plug inside the central vent. Sound. The eruption of Krakatoa in 1883 made one of the loudest noises in history. If Krakatoa had been in California, people all the way to New York would have heard it. No way. That's insane! Fantastic features. When Krakatoa blew up in 1883, two-thirds of the island was swallowed by the sea. Whoa. Don't mess with Krakatoa. Rock and ash. 
In 1973, strong winds blew hot rocks and ash, called tephra, from the eruption of the Eldfell volcano in Iceland and buried homes in a nearby town. Lava flow. The Eldfell volcano created a spectacular curtain of fire in 1973. This fountain of fiery lava erupted from a fissure that crossed the entire island. Sound. Some volcanoes blast with sound. Others are quiet when they're around. But Eldfell in 1973 hissed and steamed dramatically. Fantastic features. In 1973, when the Eldfell volcano erupted, some heroic villagers in Iceland tried something very unusual. For seven months, they sprayed seawater on the advancing lava, slowing it down and saving their fishing port. Sweet. Wow, I feel like I learned so much. That was really cool. I enjoyed that. So we've done the plants, we did the volcano. We can do this. Welcome to Operation Rescue. Your challenge is to save this town by guiding the lava flow around the buildings and safely down the mountain. You can move the lava flows by carefully placing concrete blocks. Click to choose the kind of block you want on the side of the screen. Then click to place it in front of the lava. Hurry, there's no time to lose. What? Wait, where do I? One tree down. You think if it goes down like this? What? What happened? Ready for that? Oh, wow. I think that makes a good pathway. Sweet! Is that house gonna get it? Because I thought we made it pretty clear. Alright. Let's keep it going. Whoa! I didn't have a chance. To... Oh! Oh! Second, I'm going so fast. Woo! They got out. Oh no! That house is gonna get. 
get it. Ma'am, or sir, evacuate your home immediately. Awesome, Arnold. just had to not make it. I wonder how many levels there are. I'm on easy? What is hard like? We should try it on a hard. Hard! Oh my gosh. Okay. Trying to save the most people here. Again? Uh, no thing. See you later, lava blockader. <laughs> Bro, that was hard. That was a really hard game. Okay. What do we have next? <laughs> What's this? How can you tell when a volcano is angry? It blows its top! <laughs> oh, that's awesome gotta respect and love the PC games. They're just... Mwah, the character is so good. Okay, what about this? Presto Changeo! Want a new nose? You can change your face. Anything goes. always says, there's nothing like a raging river of molten rock, and this red-hot lava is really moving. It's Whoa. much hotter than boiling water and may travel for many miles before slowly cooling into solid rock. Whoa, that was really cool. <gasps> no way, you can look at cool volcanoes. You may think this is a holiday celebration, but these fireworks are really a spectacular eruption of Mount Etna in Italy. Here we are at the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro, the largest volcano in Africa. Its name means Shining Mountain in Swahili. 
Many of the world's volcanoes are at the edge of the Pacific Ocean. They form a circle of active volcanoes called the Ring of Fire. Oh, okay. When Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines erupted after sleeping for 500 years, it wasn't a total surprise. Scientists knew something was up because of all the gas escaping from the volcano and all the earthquakes happening beneath it. Beautiful Mount Fuji is a familiar face in Japan. It's a composite volcano, which means it's made out of alternating layers of solid rock and ash. You're looking at the largest active volcano on Earth, Mauna Loa in Hawaii. Mauna Loa is a good example of a shield volcano, which builds up slowly as lava oozes out and flows down the side of the volcano. Did you know there are chimneys known as black smokers under the ocean? The hot water spouting from these chimneys mixes with cold water from the ocean, releasing tiny particles that make the water look black. Huh, I did not know that. Cotopaxi is one of Ecuador's most well-known active volcanoes. Located high in the Andes Mountains, it's also one of the tallest volcanoes in the world. The newest island on Earth is Surtsey, off the coast of Iceland. For two years, a volcano poured out red-hot lava just above the water until Surtsey Island was formed. Surtsey, take a curtsy. <laughs> that just triggered something in my brain. But why come Miss Frizzle sounds a lot like Professor Hotchkiss and Nancy Drew? They sound very similar. Maybe that's where the character's inspiration came from. Over the years, this cinder cone keeps growing. It shoots out cinders and other tephra that pile up in layers around the volcano's opening. You could say it's prone to be a cone. In 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted in the state of Washington, creating a huge column of ash. The eruption knocked over millions of trees and created mud flows that streamed down the mountain as fast as a car. That's one vigorous volcano. Wow. This was so cool. It's time to take chances, get messy, and make your own volcano. Ooh. Click the buttons on either side to pick how thick the lava is and how much gas is in it. Then click the go button to see if your volcano makes a little splatter or a big blast. High gas. Thick magma. Runny magma. Medium magma. Low gas. High gas. Thick magma. Congratulations! You've created a Plinian eruption. What a blast of gas! Look at that huge eruption column. Medium gas, ruddy magma. With ruddy magma like this, you can create smaller lava fountains and lovely lava flows. Low gas. Hawaiian eruptions create hot, runny rivers of lava that can go for miles. Medium gas, medium magma. Look at that lovely cinder cone. You can turn the music off or on by clicking the radio. Oh. On, please. Welcome to The Life and Times of a Volcano, starring the Earth's crust and hot molten rock called magma. Click the arrows to view the important stages in a volcano's life. The life of a volcano begins when hot melted rock from deep inside the earth, called magma, is pushed up toward the surface of the earth. Long before a volcano erupts, magma collects in a pocket called a magma chamber. Most magma chambers are located less than 10 miles below the surface. Really? Magma forces its way upward like oil and water until a path to the surface is created. This throat of the volcano is called the central vent. 
Hot gases are trapped inside the magma, just like the bubbles that are trapped inside a can of soda pop. Just before a volcano erupts, the pressure builds up and the surface of the Earth begins to bulge. Finally, the pressure becomes so powerful that it forces the gases, lava and rocks to burst through the volcano and wahoo! What an eruption! A volcano can have a lifetime of hundreds of thousands of years and it may erupt many times and in many different ways. All the rocks and lava from the eruptions build up over time to form a mountain. Uh, that was such a great explanation. So good. <laughs> I think we only have this one thing left. Pahoihoi is what this smooth, wavy lava is called. Pahoihoi forms when the outer crust of the lava flow cools, while the hot lava underneath keeps moving and makes the crust bubble and wrinkle. Okay, so... Oh! We can go outside. Ready to see the lava flow? It's out the door we go. <gasps> no way. What is this? Earth isn't the only place where you can find volcanoes. In fact, Mars is the largest known volcano in the solar system. Olympus Mons is larger than all of the Hawaiian islands strung together. Oh, that's pretty cool. Most volcanoes are formed at the bottom of the ocean. When an underwater volcano grows until it reaches the surface, you get a new island. When you look under the water, you can see that a chain of islands is really a mountain range on the ocean floor. Sometimes a crack forms in one of the slowly moving plates on the ocean floor. When hot magma keeps erupting through the crack, eventually an island is formed. Nice. I feel like now I can... I can tell someone about how a volcano was formed. <laughs> I feel um, well informed on the matter now. People who live near large volcanoes keep a very close eye on them and have plans for evacuating the area before an eruption can hurt them. You're so right, Tim. As my Uncle Leslie always says, when a volcano talks, people listen. What is this? Welcome to Leapin' Lava. This Whoa. bus really needs your help to make it across the treacherous lava and mud flows. Click where you want the bus to go. Click in front of the bus to jump across using safe floating objects. To earn extra points, pick up stranded animals along the way. Good luck lava leaping! Oh jeez, okay. Oh no way. It's like frozen. Oh, okay. Got it. See how hard hard mode is because the other game, oh my gosh, hard mode hard. is. Oh. Oh. Oh, things 
see. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Time. One more time. I want to see. Here's another one. turn. Keep up the good work. Again? Come back soon for more lava leaping. Those hard modes are hard. Let's see what this is. According to my research, this seismograph is used to measure all the tiny earthquakes that happen when a volcano is about to erupt. I hope it's not broken. Huh. Electronic distance measurement uses a laser light to measure the distance between two points. If a new batch of magma is rising to the top of a volcano, the volcano gets bigger, and the distance between the two points gets larger. Interesting. I hope this volcano doesn't pull any surprises. No need to fear an eruption interruption here, Arnold. Scientists <laughs> are keeping a very close eye on this volcano. They study its shape, monitor earthquakes, and test the steam and other gases that come out of it, they would know if it was about to blow. What about this? According to my research, volcanoes may destroy life, but they also help to create it. The broken surface of this lava in Hawaii has provided a good place for soil to collect and plants to grow. That's pretty cool. Welcome to rub a dub Stub. Your Give mission is to collect as many rocks as you can while safely navigating your submarine to the research ship. Just click where you want the submarine to go or use the arrow keys. Ooh, Move the fancy. sub toward the research ship while you avoid tube worms, black smokers, and heat vents. Pick up starfish for extra chances and clam bubbles for protection. But watch out for red hot lava. It's a grueling race against the clock, but I know you're up to it. Good luck, submarine sailor. Oh, okay. Oh, him too. Oh. Wait, what? So I collect rocks. Ah. Do I move on when I'm ready? Ah. Ooh. This is so cool. Oh, 
fascinates me. You really made that submarine move. How simple these games were, but like you could seriously sit in front of a computer and play this for hours. <laughs> Gotta grab these gems. Try the hard mode. Hard. We have to try it. Oh. Oh, I see. They stay hot red for a longer time. So the clam was for protection. protection. Oh, okay. No. Oh, nice. You really made that submarine move. Cool. What if I didn't grab anything and I just moved forward? Would it still let me? Sure. Just get points for having all the time. I barely touched that. I like the music. Music's nice. It's very calming. down to the volcano? The places where lava Ooh. comes out of a volcano are called vents. Gas and steam escape from these vents too. That's pretty neat. Okay, but how fun was that? It's just, I love, I just love the aesthetic of these older games. They're just so good. Are you ready to quit? Yes. Yes. See you back the bus another time and that was it <laughs> so good to go back and relive these games they're just so good i love the magic school bus and they have plenty of games that they made in a series so this is just one of them and i'm excited to hopefully share the rest of them i hope you guys enjoyed it too i hope it was a blast to the past for you I love exploring nostalgic games with you guys. But anyways, you have a great rest of your day. I will see you again sometime soon. Bye, guys.